The Adventures of the All Guardsmen Party, Guardsmen and the Pilgrims. So the last time the surviving remnants of a regiment of Imperial Guard find themselves the guests of Ordos Xenos. Several guardsmen were found to be harbouring gene stealer infections and were purged, but the remainder were given the opportunity to continue to serve the Imperium as soldiers of the Inquisition. So no shit, there we were. 37 guardsmen who had just graduated the Darwin School of Veteranacy on an Inquisition ship, getting told that our lives would now consist of hanging out with just about the scariest people in the Imperium and doing whatever they told us to. Serving the Inquisition is not a very normal job, as in there's no way of knowing how things are going to work or what you'll have to do. Inquisitors have tons of leeway in how they do things, so each one runs their team in their own unique way. You might get an Inquisitor who likes to travel around, following rumours and hanging out with heroes of the Imperium, and it's your job to act as the Calvary when they get into trouble. You might get an Inquisitioner who's really into research and wind up spending all of your time guarding an incredibly disturbing science facility. You might get an Inquisitor who hangs out playing psychic nursemaid to a band of spies and end up being used as a meat suit by your boss when he feels a personal touch is needed. Or you might get the inquisitorial equivalent of a Pokemon trainer. Pokemon trainer isn't the best way to put it. Pokemon professor might be better. Our inquisitor collected teams from across the sector and handed them out to interrogators who needed to get their feet wet leading a team. This was actually a pretty important role. Not every inquisitor has time or men to spare when an apprentice interrogator is ready to move on. So they would get sent to our boss. He would set them up with a team and mission and keep an eye on how they did. He had a real name, but we called him Professor Oak. Oak had a fair number of recruitment teams that wandered around looking for fresh meat, one of which was hanging around our battle checking for gene stealers and drafting guardsmen who wouldn't be missed. We got packed up and sent along to Oak's mobile base of operations and got put through a crash course in being an Inquisition goon squad. Then we got split into squads of five or six partnered up with some combat light teams and handed out to dewy-eyed interrogators like the 40k equivalent of Bulbasaur. We were playing as the guardsmen. Everyone else was handled by the DM. Each team was filled out to 10 by other classes leaning towards the non-combat side. So more adepts, psychers and tech priests than the other classes. There was some of everything in each group as well as the interrogator. He would be pretty much anything. We worked with our DM to split our survivors into groups. Then he tacked on the sheets for our NPC associates, gave us a very vague overview of what each group's assignment was, and asked us which one we wanted to play as. The groups we didn't play would all go on their own missions, and the survivors would meet us when we got back to the base. We chose the squad that was being sent as part of a two-team force to check out some suspected cultist activity in a pilgrim fleet. Our roster consisted of five guardsmen, Two adepts, a tech priest, a cleric, a sister of battle, and our interrogator was a former cleric. The All Guardsmen Party and the Pilgrim Fleet. So, imagine you're a guardsman that's just been recruited, fought a brutal campaign that wore down your regiment, watched the remainder of that regiment get taken out by tyranids, then found yourself in the hands of the Inquisition. Then the Inquisition purges a few of your buddies, gives you an offer you can't refuse, ships you through the warp, and dumps you into a really creepy book camp. Finally, they split you and your remaining buddies up into squads. Introduce your squad to some weird-looking guy who seems far too excited to see you and tell you to do everything he says. Now you're hanging out in a bunch of passenger cabins on a navy ship, going emperor knows where with a few of your buddies, an interrogator, three nerds, one of which is more metal than meat, a priest, and a psychotic blonde bombshell wearing armour that's probably worth more than all of your squad's gear combined. We were just a little weirded out. Our Murray band consisted of a cynic, a nervous med student, a lazy bastard, a shameless thief, a paranoid by the name of Sarge, Doc, Heavy, Nubby and Twitch. Technically the others were part of our band as well, but quite frankly we wanted nothing to do with any of them with the possible exception of the sister, and only in the hypothetical sense. Our interrogator and the others spent the entire journey going through the files that Oak sent along, planning how they would hunt down the suspected cultists, sorting out who had contacts where, and brushing up on the exact flavour of the Imperial cult that dominated the Pilgrim fleet. We paid just enough attention to establish that we would be on ships the whole time, 
and that we were not expected to actually do anything strenuous, unless everything got screwed up. Then we played cards and slept a lot. Some people might say that two months is a long time to play cards and take naps, but those people have never served in the guard. And it wasn't all sack time. Sarge made sure we kept up our PT and combat drill. Gotta stay in shape. By the end of the trip, we were all rested and ready to stretch our legs. Whereas our teammates were wound up like springs and developing new conspiracy theories every few minutes. We finally arrived at the Pilgrim Fleet, which, as we understood it, was a bunch of ships full of hardcore zealots on their way to a world they considered holier than normal to pray, sightsee, and generally replace the population that an orc wag had recently removed. They had some sort of deal with the ecclesiarchy to provide extra transport and fleet escorts, so it was basically just an imperial colonisation fleet. Except everyone was a teeny tiny bit crazier than usual. They were hanging out in an orbit around a hive world refueling, refitting, and gathering more pilgrims. The nerds and nuts, as we called them outside of their hearing, were pretty sure that a chaos cult had infiltrated during either this stop or a previous one, and was planning something very evil. Probably something to do with Geller fields, or demons, or plagues, or heresy. We operated on the assumption that they would tell us when they figured it out. Anyhow, our ship joined the fleet escort, and a bunch of voxing and liaising started. Our job was generally pretty simple. We were there to stand guard, look menacing, and always be ready to kick some ass. If the boss went somewhere official, we'd slap an inquisitorial badge on and flank him like good little goons. If the boss went somewhere unofficial, we'd leave the badge off and slouch a little. Truly, we were masters of disguise. Whenever the nerds and nuts took shuttle trips to look up leads or meet contracts, at least one of us would tag along and watch their backs or be on hand in case of emergency. Except when the sister visited other sororitas. We weren't invited on those trips for some reason. When we weren't on duty, we each had our own little pastimes. Sarge would worry about what insanity our superiors were planning, while Doc would read his beginner's guide to medicine and heavy slept. Nobby would wander around looking for small objects no one would miss. He did this while on duty too. And Twitch would obsessively craft tripwire traps and drink recaf. Twitch and Nobby didn't exactly endear themselves to the locals, but supply and perimeter defence are important parts of being a guard, so we didn't mind. Things were going pretty well for us. No one was shooting at us. The rations were good. It didn't rain on us when we stood guard. And no one outside of our team yelled at us to do stuff. Occasionally we'd have to make a show of force or beat the shit out of someone who tried to mug one of our nerds. But generally things were pretty quiet. The most excitement we had in those first few weeks was when our cleric got in a religious debate and Sarge had to pistol whip the other debater until he put down the flamer. Eventually they must have figured something out because we all rebased to a single pilgrim ship and made ourselves the guests of the captain, while everyone else was running around saying things like, the game is afoot and we almost have them and I can practically smell them. Sarge had us gear up and get ready for everything to go plone shaped. The cavalcade of screw-ups started with one of our nerds finding a chaos tomb in a collection of holy relics and immediately deciding it was his inquisitorial duty to find out exactly what flavour of soul-destroying evil it was by reading it. Nothing has ever bad happened from doing that. Never. Never. (laughs) Unfortunately, Nobby was currently on babysitting duty and was not experienced enough to know that the correct response to someone doing this was to hit them until they stopped being stupid. Instead, he called for backup, which is a pretty good response in any case. Well, he kept the priest who owned the relic collection covered. By the time backup arrived, the adept was giggling and speaking backwards. Backup consisted of Heavy and Twitch, as well as, unfortunately, the other adept and the cog boy. The two sanish nerds decided the correct response here was to try and take the book away from the gibbering adept and start chasing him around the room. Since neither the adepts nor the tech priests were very athletic, the chase looked a lot more like a bunch of nerdy kids trying to play tag, rather than Inquisition agents pursuing a heretical artifact. None of us felt comfortable taking the initiative here, so we all just covered the doors to make sure no one entered or exited, and stood there watching the demented game of keep away. Then the gibbering adept finished the spell he had apparently been reciting, and a minor demon manifested. This galvanised us nicely and all three of us started pouring last fire into the thing before it could do anything. Unfortunately, the priest we'd been covering took the chance to run for it. Then the gibbering adept followed him out the open door. 
Then both our nerds give chase, and now all four were running through a room full of pilgrims. The priest was screaming about heretics and demons, the adept was screaming about the glory of chaos, and the nerds were still trying to wrestle the book away. The pilgrims mobbed the insane adept and tore him and the book apart in seconds, then started chasing the nerds with similar intent. The cogboy apparently took charge and decided that not being torn to pieces was the better part of Valor. Then he concluded that the safest place to hide from a mob of maddened imperial zealots was with the tech priest, who kept the ship running. The nerds ran all the way to the ship's engine room, with a steadily growing mob at their heels, baying for blood. The tech priest let them in and closed the door behind them. But the mob refused to disperse and settled in to siege the might. Meanwhile, the heroic guardsman shot the minor demon until it stopped moving, then stomped on it until it stopped being solid. With that done, we went to check up on the runners and saw the mob chase them out. This was above our pay grade, so we decided to kick the problem upstairs and forded it up while we waited for further orders. Eventually, our cleric and sister arrived with Sarge and Doc in tow, and the boss voxed us all. We gave our report. The nerds were voxed and gave theirs. Then the boss gave us our orders. Us guardsmen were to secure the relics and demon remains. The nuts were sent to talk to the pilgrims' leadership to get the mob dispersed. And the boss would talk to the captain and get some support sent down. This sounded like a pretty good plan, but by this point, we started to suspect that we were the only competent people on the team. What happened next proved us right. Our interrogator marched up to the captain of an imperial vessel, a man who could trace his family's command of the ship back to the founding of the sector and started giving him orders. This did not go over well. While our interrogator was an agent of the Inquisition and had the rosette to prove it, he was not an Inquisitor, and the captain of an Imperial vessel is generally considered to be the second only to the Emperor by their crew. He managed to insult the captain in about six different ways in three sentences, which resulted in him getting his ass thrown into the brig until he remembered his manners. The captain then sent us a brief message instructing us to sort out any problems with the cargo, without bothering him or his crew. While we were digesting this new development, the cleric and the sister got jumped by the cultists we'd been looking for. Luckily, the sister and cleric were heavily armed, incredibly paranoid, and far more level-headed in an emergency than the nerds were. They fought a retreat to the Sororitas Enclave that kept watch over this shipload of pilgrims and dug in. Unfortunately, the only sisters in this enclave were Hospitallers, and some other non-combat orders. So while they could handle a bolter, they weren't suited to breaking out against the besieging cultists. To put it simply, they were stuck until help came. Just like our adept and cogboy, it was down to us to pull everyone's asses out of the fire and take care of business before things got any worse. Hey guys, this is just a quick bit of promo. We got our website up and running and we have a massive restock on most of the models. However, one of the cool things about the website is if there's a model that you're waiting on, you can enter your email and be put on a waiting list. And it's not just good for you so then you'll know when they're restocked. We can also see what you guys are waiting on and what we should be printing. (laughs) So either way, the models are by far the best way to support this channel and to help us do videos that YouTube would find inappropriate on the platform. (laughs) And, like, let's be serious, the models are pretty based looking, so once again, just look at the titties. Look at the lizard titties! <laughs> but anyway, let's continue on with the video. So no shit, there we were. A bunch of ordinary guardsmen on a spaceship full of crazy pilgrims and cultists. Our boss was in the brig until the captain was no longer pissed at him. Our nerds were trapped behind a mob that wanted to burn them as heretics. Our nuts were pinned down by a bunch of actual heretics and it was our job to fix everything. Sarge took command of the situation and started going through the Imperial Guard NCO Disaster Response Checklist. Step 1. Secure the perimeter. Step 2. Determine chain of command. Step 3. Call for backup if needed. Step 4. Establish contact with friendlies. And Step 5. Combine forces with friendlies and repeat. Step 1 was already done. We had that perimeter locked down like nobody's business. There just wasn't anything we actually cared about inside of it. Step two was a bit trickier, because we were still in Vox contact with the nerds and nuts, and we didn't trust them to tie their shoes, much less than lead an op. We solved that problem by saying something about Vox interference and reducing the pickup range on our combates until we could selectively ignore them. Step three was accomplished by asking the cogboy to get his admech buddies 
to send out the combat code for the other interrogator team that was looking at the fleet. Step 4 was already done as well. We knew exactly where the friendlies were. There was just a bunch of armed cultists and angry mob between us and them. All that was left was to get cracking on step 5. We decided that all things considered, the cleric and sister could use our help more. And would provide more help in return. So we went for them first. Also, they were holed up with a bunch of hot nurses as opposed to creepy machine men. Unfortunately, we still had our orders not to let anyone touch the demon goo or look for evil books. We either had to split up, which was stupid, or wait for reinforcements, which wouldn't be coming for a while, or use our initiative. So we tossed an incendiary grenade into the room and locked the doors and went to go rescue some hot nurses. Unsurprisingly, the cultists had set up an outer perimeter to keep out any reinforcements. So after we established where they were, we fell back and started looking for other options. Nobby put forward the idea that pilgrims seemed inclined to mob heretics. And these were definitely heretics. And why charge a fortified position when you can get someone else to do it for you? So Sarge found the nearest chapel and made a heroic speech about how the hot nuns needed our help and would probably be really grateful. Suddenly we had our very own mob of zealots. The attack went more or less perfectly. The mob charged in from two directions and after the cultists started mowing them down we came in for a third. We cut into their flank like the pros we were. Suppressing, advancing and flushing like only a squad of guardsmen can. When we started to hit the cultists covering the Sororitas Enclave, the sister and the cleric saw their chance and pushed forward to meet us, crushing the last of their resistance. Unfortunately, the second we rescued them, the sister and cleric started giving orders. Command of the zealots was taken from us, and the entire mob was redirected towards the section of the ship where the cultists came from. Per force, we tagged along, but none of us were exactly keen to be taking orders again, especially since the sister's plan seemed to consist of Get him. So while the sister and the cleric led the mob straight into a well-prepared enemy position, we appointed ourselves as the Hospitaller's Guard. Our squad hung around at the rear of the charge and helped the senior sisters pick up the wounded while we watched for flankers and waited for the shit to hit the fan. We fully expected the mob's suicidal rush to fail. A lightly armoured force trying to press through a choke point into a fortified enemy position wasn't going to work, no matter how high their morale was. We weren't prepared for just how hard it felt though. The cultists had not only set up a very nice kill zone at the single entry point to their cargo bay, they had also set up all sorts of runes and circles in the kill zone. A wave of bodies attacked resulted in a whole lot of people dying right on top of these runes, which immediately started glowing and doing warpy stuff. By the time the mob lost heart and started to retreat, the cargo bay was practically filled with lesser demons. We took the reverse in the flow of bodies as our cue to move forward and lay down some covering fire. Luckily the demons were equal opportunity warp monsters. They spent as much time attacking each other and the cultists as chasing down the last of our pilgrim mob and its two erstwhile leaders. Between the demons lack of coordination and our covering fire, the two nutters managed to hobble most of the way back to our position. Most of us wanted to leave them there, but Doc sprinted out and dragged them the rest of the way to our lines and back to the Hospitallers. Between the two of them, they had about three functional limbs, and Doc spent the next few hours with the sisters patching them up. At this point, Sarge reassumed command and decided that containment and waiting for reinforcements was the best of the available options, so we fell back around the corner, set up a barricade and heavy stubber, then settled in for the long haul. After a while, the demons ran out of cultists to eat and started to poke their noses around the corner, and were promptly shot in the face. This was old hat for us, really. We could defend a barricade in our sleep, literally, in Heavy's case. And after a few initial rushes, the demons didn't really seem that keen on leaving their cargo bay. We all fell into our usual roles and routines from the guard. Twitch stared at the edge of the kill zone and fired whenever he thought something might be moving, while Heavy went to sleep, sitting up, with his eyes open and finger on the trigger. Behind the barricade, Sarge went around yelling at people and worrying. Nubby went off to acquire supplies, and Doc made eyes at one of the hospitalers while they were both elbow deep in the cleric's guts. After a few hours of light trench duty, which was actually quite nice all things considered, our backup arrived. The second interrogators team, who had been doing Emperor knows what all this time, showed up at our barricade and Sarge explained the situation. Once again, command was handed off, but... Luckily, the new interrogators decided to leave Sarge in charge of the barricade while he went to talk with the captain, 
and convince him not to just void our section of the ship. Our little trip had been reinforced to ten guardsmen, two psychers, and another damn cleric, so Sarge decided it was time to be proactive. Sarge wasn't happy to have another cleric around, and none of us wanted anything to do with the two psychers, so the cleric was put in charge of keeping them as far away from us as possible. With that taken care of, a plan of attack was quickly formed, and a pair of grenade launchers were scrounged up from the other team's arsenal and Nubby's collection. We started a walking barrage up the hallway, then slowly advanced our entire brigade until it was at the edge of the cargo bay. This wasn't exactly the fastest way to clear out the demon infestation, but it was definitely the safest. Not a single one of them managed to get within biting range of us. Once we were to the edge of the bay, we just sat there and shot nades into it until we ran out, which took quite a while since Numby could acquire a surprisingly large amount of stuff. Eventually the launchers ran dry and it was time to clear the cargo bay the old fashioned way, but the nades had done their job wonderfully. There wasn't really any cover left in the bay at all, so as long as we advanced slowly and carefully, it was pretty easy to mow down the few remaining demons before they got too close. All in all, it went pretty well, except for the big glowing shield thing at the back of the bay. The shield was big and glowy and evil looking. We could sort of make out the remaining cultists inside of it, doing culty things, but we had no desire to get close to it. Quite aside from its appearance, there were quite a few corpses near it that looked like they had been turned inside out. We scientifically examined the shield for a while, which is to say we shot at it with every type of weapon we had sitting around, but nothing even dented it. Eventually we gave up and Sarge voxed the replacement interrogator and the two adepts with him for advice. We got a long-winded explanation that included a lot of terms like ritual anthropotic shield and drawing power directly from the warp, an energy-based demonic life form and attempt to physically resonate with, then overwhelm the field, which boiled down to uh, go get the psychers to poke at it. This was not the solution we were hoping for. We had all heard stories about psychers had, had encountered a few chaos witches during one of our deployments, so none of us had any desire to be near our two psychers when they attempted to crack open the shield. With the exemption of Sarge, the clerk and the other squad leaders, we all fell back as far as we could go and got ready for a shitstorm. It didn't take long. Within a few seconds of the psychers walking towards the shield and getting all glowy, everything went wrong. The first psyker started screaming and was suddenly surrounded by a torrential downpour of blood. Then the second psyker started growing wings and horns. We all promptly opened fire on the possessed psyker and quickly reduced him to a thoroughly charred corpse while Sarge decked the first psyker and dragged him back to our barkey. Since one psyker was unconscious and the other one was a pile of smoking ashes, we decided that it was probably time to figure out our own solution to the problem. Our experiments had established that Laz fire and grenades didn't do much to the shield, but since we were guardsmen, we felt sure that enough faith and firepower could solve anything. We set up positions around the shield and started continuously plinking Laz fire into it, because when you have a fusion reactor to recharge your cells from, you might as well lay down some indiscriminate suppressive fire. While we held the fort, Nobby and the cleric were sent to acquire as many explosives, holy artifacts and priests as possible. While they were out scrounging, Twitch made a very good argument for setting up a blast shield. We voxed the cogboy and his buddies, who were still under siege, and asked them to send down some servitors with big old metal shipping crates. Then we built a big ass wall around the shield. When the supply run was finished and the blast shield was in place, we more or less just dumped several wheelbarrows filled with holy symbols into the walled area along with several barrels of Prometheum. We got a lot more stuff than we expected. It turns out that we were going to use it to blow up some heretics is a pretty persuasive argument. After that we got the priest to bless all the explosives we could scrounge. We weren't sure it would help but it certainly wouldn't hurt and it let them feel useful. We tossed the holy munitions into the blast area as well and had Twitch set up the detonators. Then we got as far back as we could, started a 10 second timer on the explosives and ran like hell. None of us were really sure if the holy shrapnel helped at all, but when we came back there was nothing left of the cultists and their shield, except a glowing puddle of molten metal and a series of dents in the walls that no amount of buffing would ever remove. At this point Sarge declared victory and we all went to get a snack, a nap and a cup of recalf. After that was done, we decided it was about time to retrieve the rest of our team and get the hell out of the ship before anyone else tried to kill us all. We secured the boss from the ship's brig by turning the clean-up investigations over to the second interrogator 
and promising to never bring our boss back to the ship. Ever. While he was escorted to the shuttle, we chatted with some of the priests who helped us make our giant holy hand grenade and got them to smooth things over well enough for us to get our adept and cogboy back. Finally, we got our sister and cleric deposited in our shuttle's infirmary, where they would stay until we handed them off to Oak's doctors for a complete set of augmatics. Then we went out and got drunk. We enjoyed a night of drinking with our friends from the other team, as well as a few of the more helpful pilgrim priests and our surviving nerds. The high point of this was us all giving Doc shit for being hung up on the one hospitalers, then hauling his drunk ass into the enclave and getting him to declare his undying love for her and her dexterous hands and perfect stitching. We dragged him away before he could devolve into sloppy poetry, piled into her shuttle and called it a night. By the time we all woke up back where we docked with another navy transport and on our way back to the ISS Pokemon Center, the trip back was almost exactly the same as the trip out, except we hung out with the cog boy a little more and Doc was kept busy. The tech priest had been damn handy working with the ship's ad mech and handling our communications, so we promoted him to the rank of cog bro and he was welcome in our quarters. Doc had a pretty stressful trip. It was his job to keep the sister and cleric alive until they could be handed off to Oak's medical teams, but he never had proper medical training. Just a crash course in field aid and meatball surgery. The ship's surgeons could have helped, but the interrogator refused to ask the captain for their help for some reason. So Doc cracked open his medical books and did the best he could. They lived, mostly. When we finally got back to the Inquisitor ship, we immediately went out and found the other survivors from our regiment. We all swapped tales of incompetent superiors, insane teammates, horrific enemies, and intense boredom until word came down that our interrogator was being praised for his successes and would be elevated to full inquisitor. Everyone had a good laugh about this and we joked about where he'd find himself in prison next, right up until we got word that he was looking for us, with the intent to add our squad to his new retinue. We spent the next week or so hiding with the cogbro in the bowels of the ship, while all of our buddies made up a wild and conflicting stories about our untimely death, reassigned to a penal legion, imprisoned by the Ordos Hereticus, induction into the Astartes, and so on. Eventually he left with the surviving adept, as well as the sister and cleric, both of whom had more metal in them than the average tech priest by this point. We all breathed a sigh of relief and returned to our regiment's little camp. After a few weeks of R&R, or as close as you can get on an Inquisition battleship, a runner came down and told us we were being assigned to a new team under interrogator such and such, and we were to report to your shuttle immediately. With a weary sigh, we packed up our bags, or overloaded wheelbarrow in Nubby's case, and headed out to our transport. When we got to the shuttle, the pilot helpfully informed us that the interrogator, his two assistants, and his three psychers were already aboard. Twitch and Nubby both tried to run for it, but the shuttle's hatch was already closed. Twitch and Nubby were retrieved, and we all moved into the main seating area of the shuttle. We were greeted by our new interrogator, and introduced to our new teammates one of whom was giggling and chewing on a seat cushion. As we stared in horror, the interrogator gave us a quick briefing, explaining that we had been assigned to go find out why a world hadn't been supplying psychers to the black ships. We did not have a good feeling about this. 